you also don't have a mount anymore. Yeah, that's why she's walking. So they go one area, I'm gonna go the opposite. Okay, let's say they go north, I'm gonna go east. All right, so you're just gonna split up from the two of them. So, Velo, so you're gonna follow Syrah into the desert, or you're just gonna wander off on your own like Jam did? I'm gonna just wander off. I, I am not following this piece of shit. Okay, so Syrah's gonna walk off on her own. Cam and Velno. So after Syrah walks away and Velno, are you gonna choose a direction to go off or are you just gonna go random? If you're gonna go random, I'll roll a d20 for you. I'm gonna go random because I like to move things. All right, I will roll a d20 for you and that will decide what direction you're going towards. All right, so that's a 14. So I'm gonna say you're going southwest, which is back towards the camp. That's okay. I'm from the window. All right, so Curtis, you're going east, Cyrus going north, and Velnos went back to the Oasis. We'll go with Cham first, because you guys have gotten a lot of fuckery time today. So we'll go with Cham. So Cham, um, I'm going to roll a d20 to see what you run into. Are you flying on your dragon, or are you just walking through the desert? No, no, the, the dragon's with uh, the princess. All right, so you're just walking through the desert, then. All right, that's a 14. So Cham, what I'm going to say is, uh, as you're wandering through the desert, you look and you you think you might be seeing some kind of a mirage it looks oddly to you like a home like a a house just in the middle of nowhere i am going to go to the house you walk up and you see what appears to be a small like a modern house with a lawn despite the fact it's in the middle of a desert and a white picket fence around it i'm going to do a search check see if there's anything unusual about this area uh, you rolled a 16. You think it's a definitely unusual, but you think it might have something to do with magic, but you're not 100% sure what's going on here. It is definitely strange. I'm pretty much going to go low profile, like like as low as I can get. I'm going to do a, uh, a stealth check. Just, just go around and try to go like a... Is it, is it a two-story? Is it a two-story house? One. It is a two-story house. I'm going to crawl up and let's just look around see what the fuck's up with this. All right, roll your stealth check. You hop the fence and you kind of like slink around the house and you look in some of the windows. I'm getting got the joint stuck for that probably, but fuck it. You look in the windows and you don't see anybody inside the house. However, inside it looks like, you know, a standard normal house. It's got a kitchen, a living room. However, you do notice that one room in the house, which looks kind of like a game room sort of thing, has this big diorama of what looks like a city and it takes up almost the entire room, but it's made out of like cardboard and various other things i'm gonna do a uh, intelligence check see if i if i know like this like i don't know witchcraft where uh i could be trapped here so what you're gonna do is you'll roll survival and that will discern whether or not you're walking into some sort of a trap if you go inside this building or you stick around oh that was a third ah. you discern that it appears to be perfectly fine doesn't appear to be i mean it's weird but it doesn't appear that there's anything malicious yeah, I'm just going to turn around and get the fuck out of there. So you're just going to hop back over the fence and run away? Yep. All right, you go back to the fence, and as you try to hop over it, a shield blocks you from doing that and kicks you back into the yard. All right, before we continue with Cham, Arch, you are going to now roll a search check because you are seeing something very odd in front of you as well. You don't know what it is. There's just something out there that you can see. You have no idea what the fuck it is. Are you going to walk towards it? She's 100% just going to, like, head towards whatever it is. She's like, is it a Starbucks out here? Is there a person I can kill and turn into a donkey? Like, I'm not sure, but we'll figure it out along the way. We'll all have our own fun today. Okay, so you walk forward, and you appear to come to something similar to what Cham came to, which looks like a two-story house with a yard and a white picket fence. And it's, again, it's in the middle of nowhere. However, you don't see a frog in the front yard. What she is going to do is she's going to start heading towards the house and she is going to cast Detect Magic. You do detect that there is magic around the house. Like, it's just in general, just a magic aura. There's no, like, lines or nope. specific. Basically... It feels like there is so much ma like everything about that house is magical. It's almost like overload, like you can't discern one thing from another. All right, so she's going to touch herself and cast spell immunity and just head into the door. As you enter into the front yard, you step in. Cham, she just appears in front of you. You have no idea how this happened. Yeah, and Syra also apparently sees you immediately in front of her. I want you to both roll to see how you react to this. It's just a straight d20 to see if you both freak the fuck out. 
So, Cham, you immediately fall on your ass, and you're just like, what the fuck? And Cyrus is like, really? I'm going to try to dig under the fence. Okay, roll dexterity. Cyrus is going to ignore him and just head towards the door, because she's interested now. All right, you rolled a one. So as you start trying to dig under the fence, you realize that the posts from the white picket fence go down and down and down, and they don't appear to stop. She's going to call back as she's walking. Uh, her place is magical, darling. Don't know what the fuck's going on. Probably best to get a move on and just All keep right. walking. Okay, so you guys are in the front yard now. Now I'm going to go to Velnos. I want you to roll hmm. a search check for me as you're walking through the desert. Okay. You rolled a 12, so in the distance you see what appears to be a building, but it's kind of obscured by the heat of the desert. So you can continue on towards it, but it, it's very odd because you don't remember seeing a building when you were walking all the way, when you, well, actually you didn't walk all the way out there, you came through a portal, but you don't remember seeing a structure like this in the area that you're in because you're aware how close you are to the camp. So you're going to continue towards it? Why not? You continue towards it, and once you reach it, you see that it looks like a normal two-story house with a, a lawn and a white picket fence around it. However, you don't see anything else out of the ordinary. I'm going to knock and do it. All right, so as you pass into the front yard, you then immediately come face-to-face -face with Arch and Cham, who just sort of appear in front of you, and you two guys then see him walk through the gate. And I'm going to have all of you roll a d20 again to see who freaks out. Am uh, I still digging? You rolled a one, you attempted to dig, and you failed. All right, everybody freaks the fuck out. <laughs> everybody. You all just, like, start running around. But the problem is, again, you can't leap over the fence. There's something stopping you from leaping over the fence and going outside of where you are. And it appears that when you're from the outside looking in, nothing can see you. But you do still have the house there, which, again, Cham, you're the only one that does really examine that. Tyra's okay. heading for the door because she's, like... Whatever this is, she's going to kill it and get it over with. She's done. You go and open the door. Inside the house, you don't see anybody immediately anyway. There, you don't hear anything. You see what looks like a normal house on the inside, except one room appears to have a rather large diorama of a city. It's made out of cardboard, kind of cheaply made, but it takes up the whole room. I just want you to know I am absolutely resisting my sociopath. Just set it on fire and walk on. She, like, leans out the door. Frog, I need you in here. There's shit afoot. I'm just gonna sit where I'm at. All right. So it seems like this particular incident is going to require... Elf, are you willing to fuck him again? I'm, I'm just gonna pull out my fucking, uh, blade <laughs> as I hear that. I'm gonna just point the teeny tiny tip. I'm gonna do saber then. I'm gonna point the little tip of my woody saber and say, "Don't you dare." She shrugs and she roll. heads back in. I'm gonna go ahead and roll a search check while I'm in there. I especially want to focus on the weird city to see if there's anything I know, like topographically, if it matches any cities that I know of. All right, so you're trying to match it to a city that you know, that you might know. So as you look over the city, you see that it looks like a replica of. What would be the northern capital, which is Kalgar, it's, it looks like a, a very crudely made model of that city. The massive garden looks like it's in the same place. The squares with all the statues look like they're in the same kind of layout as that city is because you've seen the topographical maps of it. You've been there before. So that that's what it looks like to you. Is there anything like off about it? Well, other than the fact that it looks like it was constructed by, like, a, a high school art class. Is there any, like, this temple doesn't, like, is there, like, a big fucking thing off in the middle? No, it looks like it's a relatively accurate replica, at least in terms of the layout. She, she's right. going to cast Detect Magic on the table to see if there's anything connected to that city. You cast Detect Magic, and it appears that, yes, like everything else in the house, it appears to be everything in that house is, is magical, including that the diorama. Now, everybody has has everybody walked inside the house at this point, or no? Are you guys still waiting no, outside? No, no, I'm, I'm outside. I'm sitting down. I, I, ain't going, I ain't doing shit. Velno, so are you going to go inside, or are you going to stay with uh, Kermit? I'm going in. Okay. Yes. All right. So you're going to go inside along with, and you, you see the same things that Arch's character does. You see that the, the, the house is laid out normally and there's the diorama and stuff. And you see Cyrus kind of overlooking at it. Arch, I want you to roll a, it would be technically a search check, but it's basically perception. Roll to 17. You see what appears to be a small magical rune above the front door on the inside of the house. Uh-oh. Elf, you aren't versed in magical arts, are you? Me? What other elf am I talking to? I'm not an elf. Not necessarily, but I can 
I'm trying to tinker with it a little bit. Can you see if you know anything about that? that and she points above the door at the room. Because uh, it's very rare that someone puts something pleasant above a doorway where people can't see it. We'll use magic device work here. You can try it. She is going to assist. Ooh, that's all right. Well, 22. All right, and Arch is going to assist. Ooh, Not very time. well. You two walk up to the door, and as you walk up to the front door, a second rune appears under your feet. After this happens, you disappear. Curtis also sees this because he's sitting outside watching the doorway, and he just saw both of you just go poof. Hey, I'm just gonna get, I'm just gonna start drawing. Them. It's grass. I don't know how you're really gonna draw on it, but unless you're gonna use your sword and just start carving things into the front lawn. So Velnos and Arch, you guys reappear. However, your environment is far different now, and it looks like your entire environment is made out of cardboard. Oh, fuck off. By the way, just to let you know, the little rune that was above the door, this is kind of just a meta thing. The rune that was above the door was for a uh, counter spell. So that's why your uh, your magic dispel did not protect you. As soon as you walked through the door, that was gone. So you guys are now in what looks like a roundabout environment. Also, Cham, in the front of the house, after they disappear, the door then slammed shut. The call to adventure means nothing to a frog that's been fucked. Okay, so Cham's just going to carve horrible things into the front lawn, probably. Um, so you guys are in this new environment. You can roll intelligence checks to see if you can figure out what the fuck just happened. Do I really need to? I know exactly what, what happened. What is your intelligence score? It's a plus two. I'm at 15. Okay, you don't. Vel knows what's your intelligence score. It's a 14. Okay, neither of you are going to have to roll then. You realize that you are now inside the diorama. I, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. What's happening? Why are we here? Let's... Do you want to split up? Do you want to do a whole separate adventure thing? Or are we going to try and not die today? Because this is very likely some serious shit. Do you think splitting up would be a good idea? See, that's what I'm saying. Please don't be the frog right now. What if I want to be the frog though? I... It's good fun. luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. And she's right. going to walk away. She's going to try and find okay. the town hall. As you guys begin walking away from each other, you hear a rather booming voice above you. You are th my puppet, and I control you. Hi, my name's Gordon. Gordon. You look up and you see what looks like a very nerdy looking guy standing over you. Fantastic. Hello, Gordon. And she waves. Oh, look, it's a nice one. Finally, normally they're just piff. Oh, unbelievably livid, but I'm, I'm, I'm willing to hear what's happening right now. Well, you see, here's the thing, and I'll explain it to you, is in my dimension, we can kind of do different things with changing people's sizes and things like that, so we like to go hopping and find people to do stuff with. That's why I put my little house out here. Unfortunately, your little frog friend didn't really want to come in the house, but we can fix that later. Um, could you just offhand as a favor? Could you kill him? Just like between us? Yes? No? I mean... I'm not I hearing no. No, he's too fun. I need to play with him. All so, right. you two are going to be my adventures for right now until I get a little froggy in here. So, here's what's going to happen. There's three different things you guys got to get in the diorama. Once you get those, then I'll let you out. All right, what are they? Well, there's three different things. So the first thing is a crown, then a goblet, and finally a paintbrush. Are we wandering, or is this... Well, like... you, could, you could ask around town. Are there other souls here, or am I going to be talking to cardboard cutouts that you voice? You know me all too well, even though we've God, never met. You fuck this fuck. Please go get the frog. I need the frog. <laughs> I need. I need something needs to be stabbed. I know they do. Please go get the frog. I rolled a seventeen to uh, search uh, uh, traps again. You do not find any traps in the front yard. You're not inside the house. You can't sense traps if you're outside. You can probably gonna... discern that there was some kind of a trap since the other two so, of them just disappeared in front of you. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to the the window again with the diorama. You look through the window and you see what appears to be a rather portly man with glasses looking over the diorama and speaking and moving his hands. 
do I see uh, any traps? Do I see, like, I'm going to use that 17. Do you see anything from inside? You see what appears to be a magical rune on the floor over to the left of where the diorama is. But other than that, you don't see anything. You can't see the one that was above the door because you're from the outside of the house. You would only be able to see that from the inside. I'm going to stuff my way around uh, the windows, see if there's any other ones. You're going to go to the second floor, or are you going to go to the other side of the house? Uh, the second floor. I'm not going to make you do a jump check because you're a frog. So you're on the second floor, so you can look through those windows. All right, roll search check. So you look in the windows, and you see what appears to be a, I guess what you would assume to be a teenager's bedroom that is full of various posters, and uh, there's a bed in there, a lamp with an end table, there's a TV with an N64 hooked up to it, even though you don't know what any of those things are. But it looks like a normal room with a bunch of weird gadgets in it that you're not really sure what they are. I... Any, uh, any traps? As far as trap scents, you don't see any that are in there. However, they may also be hidden. You need to, you would need to roll trap scents again to see if you could figure out if there's anything in the room. Because you did the first one was for the first one. You do not see any traps. All right. No, I'm going to go through the other window. You okay. look at the other window. The other window is a bathroom. All right, let me do a uh, sense trap. Again, you do not sense any traps in the room. Well, does this house have a uh, chimney? Yes, it does. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump onto the roof. Okay, I'm, again, I'm not going to make you roll for that because you're already kind of on the roof. You're on the secondary roof. So, yeah, you jump up to the main, the top of the roof where the chimney is. I'm going to start spider crawling my way down. So that'll be a climb check. 22. All right, so you're able to climb down the chimney. And as you're climbing down the chimney, you notice what appears to be a glowing on the wall behind you. As this happens, you are teleported. And you are now standing next to Syrah and Draylark inside of the diorama. And Gordon looks down at Oh, the froggy! You were the chimney, didn't you? I'm just going to flip him off and I'm going to tell him that I'm going to kill him. Oh, isn't that cute? And I'm going to intimidate him. Okay, you're uh, going to take a disadvantage because you're tiny. That's oh, minus two, which is a 20. So I'm going to roll for him to see if he's actually intimidated. Uh, that is going to be a for resistance on that. I'm going to say that's going to be a will save for him. All right, he is extremely intimidated by you, but at the same time, he knows for a fact that you can't hurt him while you're in the diorama. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell him once I get out. When I, it's not when, it's, it's not even an if. It's when I get out, I'm killing you. But what if I send you on the best adventure ever? You're still dying. You're a mean frog. <laughs> I am not in the mood. Yes, he just took it up the ass, so he's very clearly testy. Testies. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's important. All right, well. And, and I'm going to look at Syrah. Like, don't test me, girl. Don't testy me? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to search through my fucking uh, my bag of holding. Find out if, if, there's like a book, if there's like a book or something. You have one of Rocka's Bibles in there. I'm shucking at her. <laughs> Dexterity check. Didn't this whole All thing right. start off with you idiots throwing things at me? Shut the fuck up. Okay, so, yeah, you nail her in the face with the Bible again. So, Arch, that's going to be 1d4 damage to your face. And I'm just going to walk off uh, looking through, uh, looking for shit. <laughs> All right, three damage to your nose. It does break your nose, but... She takes the bone gauntlet and just, like, jerks it forward and then casts heal minor wound on herself. It's like, honestly, this is just, just getting boring at this point. Are you done? Is everybody done? I already walked off. <laughs> you off. must find the crown. All right. Uh, do you all want to split up because I'm tired of looking at your faces? Or do you want to actually survive this? I'm already, I'm already gone. All right. Frog's a lost cause. He's going to die. Uh, Elf, you and I are back together. If at any point you wish to have your original penis, just say so. I'll regrow it. Got the spell. We are here for you. As long as that's all done, we're good. All right. All right. She finger guns him and then starts like. All right, big boy, you, up there. Uh, is there, you said ask around. All right, um, I don't see anything here currently. I didn't see any, oh, you're going to place them. Okay. Uh, he doesn't exactly place them. What happens is, is that as soon as you mention that you're going to look for somebody, a cardboard figure just kind of pops up from the ground near you, and it looks like a, it looks kind of like a peasant, basically. Oh, governor, what do you want? You peasant, we're looking for things. The big guy said it, the goblet, the crown, and the, what was it? Hey, you're looking for a crown, you're looking for a crown. Crowns have uh, fountains. And which way is the fountain? Gordon kind of sweats a little bit because this is a cardboard cutout, and you can't really, like, point in the direction. He's like, uh, just... 
just, just just keep going up the road. You'll get to it. Also, because you know the layout of the city of Calgar, yeah, you know I what figured. Are. You're just asking it like a dick. He wants to role play the character. Cyrus full in on letting this happen, even though she hates it. Because mm. the only way to get out of this alive is to just let it happen. So she's like, "All right, um, okay, we're headed towards the fountain. You elf, follow this way. Go." Uh, and she just starts marching on towards. Oh, uh, and peasant, uh, here you go. Here's a gold coin for your trouble. And she, like, tosses him a coin. The the coin just kind of, like, hits the cardboard and then drops to the ground. After that, the cardboard cutout just, like, falls back to what its original position was. So they've given you the location of where the crown is. So I'm assuming that... So Curtis already walked off, so he's just somewhere else in the city. Syra is going to go towards the fountains, and Velnos, I'm going to assume that you're going to follow him. Yeah, like, I'm follow him. Undead vagina. <laughs> All right, so you, so you two travel to where the fountains are. Curtis, I want you to roll a d20 to see if you accidentally wind up in the same spot as them. All right, well, here's here's my question. Did you want to wind up in the same spot as them, yes or no? This is a trick question. If I say no, that's against me, and I go up to them. If I say yes, that's a no, and I don't. You're going to say no, you were not say going? No, I was not going to. Okay, so your your desired goal was to not reunite with them. So because you rolled a four, that means you exactly. do. So, so do okay. I see them, I'm just going to go another direction. Another question. Am I still, could I still wave around my sword? Yes. All right, I'm cutting every piece of cardboard I see. So, Cham, so here's what's going to happen. So, what are you cutting specifically? Because everything around you is literally made out of cardboard. Exactly. I'm cutting, I'm just cutting up the, uh, the city. The buildings? Yeah. So, the first thing you do is you cut through the wall of a building that's near you. And inside, it looks like this immaculate cathedral. Compared to everything else that you've seen in this place... This seems to be the most well-put-together part of it. It it looks incredibly amazing from the inside, although I'm assuming you just want to hack it to bits. I'm hacking it to bits. Okay, so as you're doing your hacking thing, I'll let you do that, and then I'm going to do Arch and Belnose first, and then we'll go back to you. 